Welcome to the Veterinary Marketing Podcast, where it's all about helping your veterinary practice attract, engage, and retain clients. Broadcasting a new podcast every Monday from sunny Southern California, here's your host, Brandon Bashirs. Hey there, everybody. Welcome to episode number 201 of the Veterinary Marketing Podcast. Hope you're doing amazing. Hope everything is going well. The world is in just such a state of conflict right now. So I want to say first that I hope that you're doing well. I hope that things are going well for you and that you are holding up in this difficult time. If there's anything that you need help with, please don't hesitate to reach out. I know that there's just so much difficulty going on and uh, if there's anything that I can do to help please let me know. I just wanted to say that first. So before we begin today, I just want to mention a couple of things. First, let's talk about what this episode's all about. I'm really excited about this episode. I've been wanting to do this episode for quite a while, and I put together a bunch of research for it. So today's episode is all about pricing and the psychology around pricing, how to position your price. And some of these things are tips and tricks and like little tactics that you can use, and others are general strategies. And I think it's really important that you consider this Especially if you start to put prices online, if you're sending out email promotions or Facebook posts and you mention pricing. It's very, very important that you put just some thought into how you're going to position your your offer so that you get as high of conversion rate as possible. So before we begin, though, I want to mention a couple of things. First, if you haven't done so already, be sure to subscribe in iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you could do me a huge favor, please leave an honest review. I would really appreciate it. And if you want additional help or if you want to um, just get any ideas, collaborate on marketing and things like that, you can head on over to the Facebook group, The Veterinary Marketing Nerds. There's a bunch of really smart people in there. And you can ask for help or collaborate, get ideas, all kinds of cool stuff. So head on over to that group as well. All right, so let's jump into today's episode, Pricing Psychology. Now, I think that price is something that is very interesting in veterinary medicine, number one, because just the industry in general is kind of adverse to selling things. There's That's, uh, you know, a bad word. Selling is a bad word, kind of, in uh, veterinary medicine. But... The truth is that if you're selling things, you're serving your clients, right? You would probably rather have them be more compliant than less compliant if you could, and that means that you need to sell products and services to them unless you're a charity and you work for free. And that's probably not the case. Everybody needs to get paid. Not only do you need to get paid, but all of your staff needs to get paid. The more that you can do to increase compliance and increase sales and revenue and things like that, the better your staff is going to be. Wouldn't you love to hire more staff? Wouldn't you love to pay your staff better and one way of doing that is making sure that you are you know making sure that you're charging what you're worth and doing value-based pricing which i think is, is very very important so let's talk about this though price is just a perception things can be expensive or cheap depending on the person or the product and so that's why it's important that we use different tactics and strategies when we're positioning our pricing to number one get the right amount of money for the services that you're offering and then number two is to attract clients to your practice that are the right kinds of clients that you love working with that are compliant that help to grow the practice not just in a a volume sense but in the way that you want to actually grow one thing that i'm hearing all the time right now is geez we are so busy we are barely keeping our heads above water And it is insane, especially with all the curbside protocols that are going on and just all of the new things that are coming out all the time. People are more busy than ever. And so, you know, time is a limited resource. You need to make sure you use it effectively. And so one way of doing that is just by charging more or making more per client that comes in. So being more efficient with the time that you do have. So that's something the pricing is just so, so important. So let's jump into this. There's a bunch of things to think about. Now, I mentioned that pricing is a perception, right? And you can affect the way that people view things based on positioning. And that's essentially what we're going to be talking about. Some of these are just like tiny tips and tricks and things. And others are larger strategies that you can use. But, you know, $100,000 to some people, that's, that's a lot of money to some people. To other people, it's not that much money. And it also depends on 
what it is that you're buying, right? If you're buying a pencil for $100,000, nothing better write best-selling novels because that would be insane to buy a pencil for $100,000. But if you're buying, you know, a 3,000-square-foot house on the beach in Southern California, $100,000 would be a steal. So that's kind of... I just want to illustrate that price is... The pricing is just a perception. How people perceive the price is going to depend on how you position it and then what it includes, what it entails, and your branding and, and all of that is going to come into play here, which is very important to consider. So let's start out with some general principles that I think are very important, and then we'll move up into some kind of quick fire pricing strategies that you can test out, especially if you're going to be putting pricing in your offers, whether it's on Facebook ads or Google ads, or if you're sending out email blasts with pricing and things like that. So let's talk about this. I think the number one thing for pricing and making people feel like they build value in your pricing is that you need to emphasis, emphasize the inherent cost of your product, everything that's involved in it. So many times this is like the number one thing that I see, especially when you're creating landing pages or things like that. If you are doing, it doesn't matter what your product or service is, the average consumer has no clue what goes into like a wellness exam, for example, or a rehab consultation, or a, a dentistry exam, or just, they just have no clue. Most people kind of have the perception of human medicine in general because that's the only experience that they have. And so they can kind of judge what that should be. So, you know, when thinking about dentistry, for example, if you have patients who come in and you need to do radiographs, you can't do it when they're awake. So you have to put them under anesthesia. There has to be people monitoring. There's a lot involved. And the average person has no clue because when they go to the dentist, the dentist sticks the um, x-ray thing in their mouth and they bite down on it and it doesn't feel comfortable and then they take an x-ray and then five minutes later they have the x-rays on the screen so it's not that big a deal to them right so we need to include all of the inherent cost in there and that helps people to perceive that what it is you're offering is in fact worth what you're charging so that's that's one thing that i think the veterinary industry needs to do a much better job what is all the pieces that go into making either a wellness exam, behavior consult, nutrition consult, supplement consult, anything that you're doing? What are you doing? What are all the pieces that make up this larger thing? And, and how can you convey that to the clients? So break every single exam or product or service that you offer down into its smallest pieces list out everything that's included. If you wanted to, you could put a value next to that. You don't necessarily have to, but think about that. How are people going to perceive all of these different things that they get packaged up in a, in a wellness exam? So that's one very, very simple, but highly effective way to do that. Okay, the next strategy that we're going to talk about is you need to show either the product or the price first, depending on what it is that you're offering. Let me explain. So let's say that you are trying to get people that are interested more so in value rather than cost, right? And there's definitely like a spectrum of people, people who want either the best product or people who want the best price, okay? So think about that spectrum. And on one side, we have the people who want the best product and they don't necessarily care what the price is. Okay, and then on the other side, we have people that are bargain hunters, and they love finding a bargain, and so they want the best price. If you want to be attracting people that are searching for the best product, if you create a piece of advertising or some kind of promotion, you want to make sure to put the product first, describe all the product benefits, get really about em emotional, about fear of loss, potential for gain, status, all of the things that that appeal to people who are searching for value and then show the price once they've said that they're interested. And that way they're at least understanding what the price is after. There's the other end of the spectrum, which are people who are searching for value. And so they'll be the kind of people that look for the price first and then determine, is this price acceptable? If it is, okay, then let's talk about what's included in it. 
I know that sounds weird, but it's totally true. It, it works to get people um, interested in, in pricing and things. So if you're running specials, especially for products or services where you have a commoditized like utility type thing. So let's say you're doing a flea treatment or um, pet products or dog food or things like that, right? Where it's a utility and a commodity. It's not like a custom dog food that you've crafted with a, a personal chef or something like that, right? If it's just dog food, people typically are looking for price with that. They're not necessarily looking for like some greater brand value that they get out of it, right? And so if you're if you're pricing and targeting products that have utility or are more commoditized, it might be good to lead with price, especially if you're doing promotions. This is going to work especially well when you have um, specials that you can offer because your rep has given you a lot of product. So just because you get somebody based on a lower price for something doesn't mean that they're only price shoppers altogether. And that leads directly into the next positioning point, which is you give a reason for a discount. Because discounting can be very difficult in that if you discount your product or service, it diminishes the value. You're saying this isn't worth as much as I say it is. It's it's worth less, right? And so if you give a specific reason, that gives people a, a reason to check off in their head, right? If they see something is a really good price or a really good value, people, if it's such a good deal, they'll initially think to themselves, this is too good to be true. This must be a scam. And so you have to absolutely work with um, the, the thoughts that are going on in people's minds when they have and see these different offers that you might be offering. So, um, so let's assume that you're going to run discounts and promotions occasionally. Um, here's something that is important to consider when you are running a discount. If you're running a discount that is $100 or less, you should use a percentage. And that re the reason for that is because typically the percentage looks like a, a greater amount than the dollar amount, which is interesting. Like if, if let's say you have a $50 product and you're going to do 20% off, right? You could have said it's $10 off, so it makes it 40, or you could say 20% off. The 20 is a bigger number, so people feel like they're saving more by having that. The inverse of that is once you get above $100, so let's say $200, if you said 20% off your $200 purchase, you'd be saving $40. So instead of saying save $40 with our, our special, they feel like they're getting more. So that's a really simple, quick rule. Whenever you can, give people the bigger number, and there's this principle that's called anchoring. And when people see a number and a savings, their mind, I mean, people have so many decisions to make. They're taking in information and trying to make decisions. And so your brain, it automatically makes assumptions. And it's just because you have so much information coming in all the time, your brain has to be efficient because it takes lots of energy to make decisions on everything that you encounter throughout the day. So when you can anchor somebody's mind in thinking that the $40 is a bigger savings than 20% because otherwise they'd have to do the math, that four is a, is a bigger number. And so it makes it feel like they're saving more. Another interesting thing kind of along those lines is that Burger King actually had a promotion where they were trying to compete with the Quarter Pounder, um, which was McDonald's, right? And so they were offering a third pounder, which was one over three is how they promoted it. And so there was actually more meat in the third pounder. It was bigger than a quarter pounder, right? A third is bigger than a quarter. But what ended up happening is when they surveyed people who were buying it, people didn't, they're terrible at math in general. And so they thought to themselves that they were eating less because the three is smaller than the four. When in, you're, So anyways, it backfired on them. And they ended up going back and and not running that promotion because the quarter pounder was so effective due to that four. So it was the one over four. So it's interesting, but when people have so many decisions, they're not going to do like a long analysis. They're not going to bust out a piece of paper and a pencil. The math needs to be really clear. And the more simple that you can make it, and the better that you can help people see the, the value in your offer, the more conversion you're going to have and the better it's going to do. 
So the next thing that I think we should talk about is the timing of discounts. If you're going to be offering discounts, I would say, especially depending on the demographics of your um, audience and things like that, it's important to consider timing in the month. And especially if you're in an area that's not necessarily as affluent, if people are getting paychecks typically on the 15th and the 30th of each month, especially near the end of the month when times are tight and, and money is tight, people have less a disposable income and so the pain is greater at the end of the month so if you're considering offering promotions or discounts considering offering them at the end of the month versus the beginning of the month if somebody has just gotten paid they have their paycheck uh, you don't necessarily have to offer a discount in the beginning of the month now this is going to depend a lot about the demographics that you have and the clients that you're trying to attract but it's definitely something to consider i think that's definitely important let's talk about actually pricing your products how much should you charge for different things now um, i think testing out pricing is really really important um but here's a few things that i think are kind of interesting that um there's been lots of studies on and um in doing research it was really interesting to read read the studies for this but when people are making an emotional decision and you're talking about maybe um you know the best care for your pet or helping your pet to live a healthy and happy life or you know things that are more emotional based when you price your products price them at an even number so that it feels right so like $97 or $100 or $125 something that just feels right if it, we're talking about feeling and we're talking about potential for gain or fear of loss or things like that the pricing should be a gut pricing because you're asking them to make a decision based on how they feel the pricing has to align with that now if you're asking somebody and the offer that you're creating is built around rational thinking like for example here's a wellness plan it includes x y and z over you know seven years it will save you 450 dollars when you're doing things like that that's more rational and the appeal the appeal that you're making is rational give them a specific price that feels like it has a reason so if somebody's buying a wellness plan and it is 483 dollars that makes sense because they've just been thinking in their brain okay i've got this it's going to save this amount of money and it financially makes sense so the price is 483 dollars that all aligns with what i was just talking about so if you have specific pricing even adding in decimal points like four hundred eighty-three dollars and twelve cents is exact amount that that it is right. It feels like there's a reason to it. That's another thing too. If you have a larger um, priced product, if you put the um, the price on a larger priced product, like let's say you're doing a TPLO surgery and you're trying to compete on price, if you say, "Hey, we have the best TPLO priced surgery um, around." and our surgery is $1,792. We've cut out everything to make sure that it is as low as we can possibly go. It feels like you went as low as you could because you ended up at a really weird number, so there's a reason for that. And so that is a, a pricing a strategy that helps increase conversion. Especially in high ticket items, that works really well. I've seen tons of studies showing the conversion rate was much higher when you had a specific number that people would then assume it's priced at this for a certain reason. So I think that that's something to consider. Another pricing strategy to consider is if you can take a larger item and break it down into smaller components or smaller pieces, you can charge more for it. So I'll give you an example. If you go to the grocery store, for example, you can find a watermelon and it is $2.99, right? And it's a huge watermelon. You can take it home and you can cut it up. If you go into the, the produce section, though, behind the counter, they have watermelons. They'll typically cut them in half and then half again. So they'll put them in quarters and they'll sell them for $2.99 quartered with plastic wrap on it. So they did a little bit of work to it. They gave you less and they sold it for more. And then if you go into like the lunch section and you look at sliced watermelon, they've actually taken the time to slice it. And, and put it in an even smaller container, they'll charge you $3.99 for it. The price is going up the smaller it goes. 
This is why people go to Costco and they buy in bulk, right? They're wanting to buy products in bulk because they think they're getting a better deal. So if you have somebody that has a, a single pet or maybe they want to do um, procedures in baby steps or installments, you can charge more by breaking it down into smaller pieces. Also offering payment plans along with the product or service that you're offering. So let's say you're doing acupuncture, let's say you're doing rehab services or something that's ongoing. If you break that into monthly installments, like a gym membership kind of thing, people will be more acceptable, accepting to a higher price than paying for everything up front. I think if you want to give people the option to pay up front, you could also do it at a small discount to collect all of that up front as well. But it's completely up to you. Here's also kind of a cool idea to test out too. When you use specific numbers, like people's birthdays, their pet's birthdays, anniversaries, things like that that are important, and you use it in promotion that feels special and important to them. So like, for example, my birthday is October 28th. If on October 28th, you gave me a special discount that was 10.28% off my purchase, I'd be like, hey, I got a birthday discount. I got to use it because it's my birthday. You could use that in your practice. You probably have the birthdays of all these pets. If you set it up so that you could just send out a discount code, it would probably be a bummer if uh, somebody was born January 1st, right? 1.1% discount. But um, you'd have to be creative. You could make it 11 instead. I don't know. But be creative with it. And if you give people, it's like a special day that um, coincides with a discount that then that number makes sense to them, that you're going to have a higher conversion with that. And that's a good idea for a, a sp pricing or promotion offer. So if, another, another strategy too, is if you're selling something, maybe like a wellness plan, a loyalty program, something that's going to help people stick to your um, practice. If you break it down into a daily equivalence, that's also really effective. Right. If you have, let's say you have a membership to your practice that's $120 a year, break it down for a daily cost. It's 33 cents per day to become a member and here's everything that you get. When you break it down like that, even if they're paying for it all at once, it really helps to make it seem like, geez, that's nothing. Like that definitely makes sense. So that's something to consider too, especially I've seen a lot of practices popping up with membership options and it totally makes sense to sell things like that in in the daily equivalents, especially if you're doing pet insurance, especially if you're doing uh, wellness plans, all kinds of stuff like that. Okay, let's just run through a few really quick, quick fire um, strategies, or I guess more like tactics to help you sell more. This, these are tactics that are gonna help you just to have higher conversion rates. And so if you're considering running offers or promotions, whether it's email or Facebook ads or Google ads, whatever it is, try these out and split test them. So number one, reduce the left digit by one. So instead of selling something for a dollar, sell it for 99 cents uh, or 95 cents. Instead of selling something for $2, sell it for $1.99. When we read from left to right, that very first number anchors in there. And so instead of thinking about $2, which is essentially 99 cent or $1.99, we look at that one and that one seems a lot smaller than the two. So that's the psychology behind that. Um, number two is to choose prices with fewer syllables. So actually, if it takes a shorter amount of time to read it and say it, um, people consider it to be actually a smaller price. So that's an interesting thing that you can try. Show prices in smaller fonts. If your price is huge on the website and it's like the biggest thing on there, people will think that it is more expensive and if you have a smaller font. It's really weird, but the smaller the font, you need to make it legible, obviously, but the smaller the, the font, the smaller the perceived price. You can remove commas, especially from um, longer or larger numbers. Let's say you're doing dental care, like extractions or things like that. If you remove the comma, it makes it seem smaller. Um, use words that are related to smaller things. So instead of saying it's high quality care, and that's what I see people say all the time, high quality, saying the word high in there helps people think expensive or more. If you just say quality care, that's a better option, right? 
So you, instead of saying high performance, you could say low maintenance, right? So getting things anchored to that smaller amount. So if it's small and the, you see the price, you're going to think that the price is smaller. If you're offering shipping or delivery or special services like that, break that out from the price and add it in as that line item. So break things out specifically. Don't lump everything together. If it's $18 to buy something or if you're going to make it $14 plus a $3.99 shipping and handling, that broken out offer will always convert higher. So that's important to think. Um, you can expose people to any higher number. And so what that means is like, let's say you're offering a special, like um, a first exam is $49. You could say, you know, join 2,591 happy clients and get your first exam free. Something like that, right? So they're seeing a high number and then they see the, the price, which is perceived to be low. Okay, the last thing that we're going to talk about is sorting prices. If you're going to actually publish your prices and you sort them from high to low, you, if you're sorting prices from high to low, number one, you want to make sure that you are, you're going to get higher conversion than if you priced them from low to high. So when people are reading from top to bottom, they're going to see the high prices first and then they're going to start going down. So prices are going to get better. They're going to get improving and so it's only getting cheaper in their mind, right? If you start out with the low products first and then you start going up the more expensive products, then they're going to feel like that it's getting more expensive. So you'll have a higher conversion rate for your middle products, typically, if you start with the high product and then you go to the low products. But the inverse of that, the problem that you might run into with that is that the lower priced products at the bottom, they're going to be perceived as lower quality. So... When people see prices going up, they typically will think the quality is higher or it's more expensive. Um, and so they'll end up choosing a, a cheaper option. But if you want to sell products that you want to be perceived as higher quality, you're going to want to start to go from low to high. If you want to sell more volume of your middle products or your lower end products, you need to start with the high ones and go to your low ones. But don't discount your products so that they appear to be cheaper and lower quality on your list. I hope that that makes sense. I know this was kind of like a, a shotgun, lots of different ideas um, thrown out there. But if you test any of these, I would love to hear how it goes and um, would love to hear your thoughts and feedback. So the best place to do that would be to head on over to the Veterinary Marketing Nerds Facebook group. And uh, if you have any questions, comments, or you need help with anything, please don't hesitate to reach out. And we'll talk soon. Bye, everyone.